Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to move from the Second Battle of Donaldsonville in Ascension Parish, Louisiana, to Carroll Parish, Louisiana, so we can talk about the Raid of Goodrich Landing between Union Brigadier General Alfred W. Ellett's Mississippi Marine Brigade and the 1st Arkansas Infantry, and the Confederate Colonel William H. Parsons and his raiding forces assembled at Gaines Landing. This occurred on the 29th and 30th of June. 1863. During the Union's most recent campaign, a wave of escaped slaves in Louisiana began to flow into the Union Army. Realizing the advantage to a new population of possible recruits, the Union Army set up multiple training facilities. While the Army wasn't sure if they could use the ex-slaves as combat troops, they did want to recruit the arrivals for labor purposes and utilize the experience of slaves in farming food to help feed the Union Army on the march and to alleviate defensive garrisons of their white troops so the white soldiers could go back to the front and fight. The Confederacy was not pleased with this development and began operations to stop slaves from escaping to join the Union. Today we'll talk about Confederate Colonel William H. Parsons and his forces from Gaines Landing. Their mission was to go to Lake Providence, Louisiana and to recapture the freedmen and destroy the crops they were growing. On June 29th, Parsons and his men prepared to attack the Union garrison defenders located on a Native American mound approximately five miles north and west of Goodrich Landing. This garrison was led by two companies of a newly minted Union force named the 1st Arkansas Infantry, comprising of ex-slaves and trained by white officers. Seeing the defenders, Colonel Parsons decided to not attack. Instead, he waited for Confederate Brigadier General James C. Tappan and his brigade to arrive. With his newly reinforced Confederate troops, Parsons signaled to the Union for a parley and offered a chance to surrender. The white Union officers jumped at the chance to surrender, ensuring they'd be treated as prisoners of war. And in a move that would surprise no one who lives in America, they also agreed to surrender the black soldiers of the Confederates unconditionally, without the same rights of being prisoners of war. The battle halfway over, the Confederates accepted three white officers as prisoners of war and 113 black men as chattel who had no rights. Taking the opportunity to surrender, they burned the surrounding plantations, depriving the locals and Union of the food they provided. The raiding was not done, and the next day Parsons continued fighting with the 1st Kansas Mounted Infantry at Lake Providence. Union Brigadier General Alfred W. Ellett, Mississippi Marine Brigade, arrived to try to save the plantation at Goodrich Landing. There he was joined by additional black troops under the command of Union Colonel William F. Wood, and they began an attack on Parsons pushing him back. Parsons, who had already attained a majority of victory by disrupting Union plantations and stealing the new recruits, pulled back. While the raid was tactically successful, it would have no meaningful strategic impact on the war. The raid was bloodless for the most part for the Confederates as they suffered only six casualties being killed, wounded, or missing, while the Union forces lost at least 150 men. 116 of them at least were captured. The remaining were killed or wounded. Now, in today's News of the Day, we noted an article in the July 13, 1863 issue of the Chicago Tribune in the News Paragraph section. A notice of how to cure dyspepsia. For those who haven't heard the word before, dyspepsia, otherwise known as dyspepsia, is another word for indigestion. The ad reads, To cure dyspepsia, take a new axe, put a white hickory handle on it, or a hole in the top of the handle, Fill the hole with gum camphor and seal it up. Then take the axe and cut cord wood at 50 cents a cord until the heat of the handle dissolves the camphor. Dose to be taken daily. I want to note that gum camphor is a crystalline powder derived from turpentine and contains a similar aroma to its natural alternative. Its minty aroma often used as a basis for other items that use camphor. So the ad says to basically take powdered turpentine, put it in an axe handle, to chop enough wood to melt the powder so you can smell camphor and to do this daily. Oh, and don't forget to spend 50 cents a cord. All of this to get rid of indigestion. Don't let Dr. Oz hear about this. He might try to hawk it as a cure for COVID-19. Well, that's it. Please join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.